Okay, so I made this practice map set to train finger control and I think it's actually really helpful. So I'm just going to make a quick video to show it to you guys. Um, it'll be linked in the description, but this video is basically going to be going over how I use this map set and how I think it can be most beneficial for training finger control. Because I've been using this map set the last few days and I think it's been really helpful. The map set is basically designed to let you drill a certain motion with your fingers or like repeat a certain burst length and stuff like that. There is a bunch of different difficulties and they're each just bursts of different lengths stacked in the middle of the map. For me, I've been using this map set to get better at starting patterns with my middle finger because personally I start patterns like bursts and triples and stuff with my index finger, um, just naturally. But I know that being able to do the same with my other finger would be super beneficial for my finger control and even my accuracy and stuff like that. And I've tried training this in different ways in the past, but I found that just using this map set and this method has been working so, so well for me. And so I wanted to share it with you guys. Uh, you don't necessarily have to be tapping in this like foreign way to benefit from this map set. Um, but I do think that taking yourself out of your comfort zone um, finger control wise is the most effective way to improve and kind of the whole point with this, I guess, map set. So that's basically why I do it this way. And I think it's been really, really helpful. Um, I'm going to coin this particular practice method, the Flamingo method, <laughs> named after the song that I use for the map set. Um, basically, I was doing the same sort of practice with another map that was the same BPM, and I felt like the map was working, but I just couldn't really tolerate the song um, for that long. So I made a new version of the map set. I changed the song to Flamingo and optimized the map a bit. And now we have this method and this map set, and I'm going to call it the Flamingo method. Uh, if you can't really stand the song though, I think Flamingo is a great song, but if you can't really stand it, you can just change it to something of the same BPM. You can type BPM equals 110 in your song list and pick a different song, take the mp3 and drop it in this song folder and just fix up the offset and stuff like that. Um, you should be good to go after that, but for the sake of just introducing this practice method, I will just be calling it the Flamingo method. So this method and this map set is all about focusing on your tapping and more importantly your finger control. So let's look at how exactly this map set makes the most of that. So the map is CS2 and all the notes are just stacked on top of each other. So you can keep your cursor in the dead middle and just focus only on your tapping. Um, I should note that you know, even though you could technically, you can just leave your cursor there and just put your aim hand wherever. But I recommend keeping your hand where it would normally be if you were actually aiming, because otherwise it kind of messes with your muscle memory and the training wouldn't be as efficient. Um, and it's AR4, so the notes appear, I guess, more calmly and they don't mess with your peripheral vision that much. And we'll get into that a bit more later. Um, the OD is 10, and that is to keep your accuracy, I guess, as disciplined as possible. Um, and also, it helps prevent note lock in case you get off rhythm. Um, and also, it's HP 0, because HP isn't really a factor in your performance on a map, so for the sake of practice, we're just going to be ignoring HP completely. So for recommended settings, we're going to need to turn on the hit error graph at the bottom of the playfield. So if you don't already have that on, which I recommend you have it on anyway, uh, you can do that in your game settings. Um, just type hit error graph and turn that on. And then right under that drop down, we're going to be making it as big as possible, which is 5x size. Um, this is huge, by the way, and you wouldn't really use this size for normal gameplay. But for the sake of this practice method, we're going to be focusing basically only on the hit error graph. And so we're going to want to make it as big as possible. Um, so this graph is basically the core of this method and what makes it work. And you'll notice that a lot of the other recommended settings are based around this as well. Um, okay, so for mods, you should use Hidden, No Fail, and Score V2. Um, hidden will remove the approach circles, which reduces the clutter in your peripheral vision, because when using this method, you'll just be staring at the graph at the bottom of the screen, and having all the approach circles in the middle gets really distracting, so we'll be using Hidden to get rid of those. Um, no Fail will completely eliminate HP, like I mentioned earlier, and Score V2 is optional, but it helps sort your local scores more accurately. Um, for scores that have the same combo, and especially for FCs, score v2 will let you sort your scores by accuracy, which just makes your leaderboard more accurate. Um, another thing you should do is turn off the game interface by pressing shift and tab during the map. Uh, this hides all the interface stuff like combo and accuracy, and even like how much time is left in the map. So this is basically to eliminate distractions so you can focus only on the hit error graph and your accuracy. Uh, so if you don't know how to read the hit error graph, uh, it's basically a graph of your accuracy. And what it does is every time you hit a note, it puts a line on the graph showing you how early or late your hit was. Um, a line on the left means you hit early and on the right means you hit late. 
Uh, the blue section in the middle is the 300 zone, green is 100s, and orange is 50s. And the white line in the middle is the technical perfect hit timing wise. So when playing these maps, you should be making a conscious effort to you know, make your hits as close to that middle line as possible. And also you should be making a conscious effort to, I guess, pay attention to how exactly you're tapping wrong. Um, so that you can realize you know, any faults or issues in your tapping that you may not have really noticed otherwise and focus your attention on fixing them. Um, so if you're new to this map set, um, you should try the lowest difficulty first called Stacks 2 and then try Stacks 3 after that. Uh, Stacks 2 is all doubles and Stacks 3 is all triples, so it's a good way to get accustomed to you know, the basic, very fundamental uh, finger control and try to get scores that you're satisfied with on both of those or on each of those before moving on. Uh, keep in mind that the score that you might be satisfied with, um, you know, it varies from player to player depending on you know your current skill level and stuff like that. So definitely focus on comparing your scores to your own abilities and relative to your own scores rather than someone else's scores. So after you feel comfortable with stacks two and stacks three, you can move on to trying the other difficulties until you feel comfortable with each one. And there's no need to go in order in like stack size or anything like that, but. I would recommend trying all of them and just try to get comfortable with each one, but just don't feel pressure to go in order necessarily. In my opinion, you should stop your session, you know, training session when you start to feel notably exhausted. I think feeling tired out is pretty normal, especially for, you know, any physical or mental intense training. And, you know, there's that feeling of feeling tired that is, I guess, normal. But I think once you feel notably exhausted, like maybe you've been focusing your eyes at the bottom of the screen too much at that graph, and your eyes are starting to give in, or your tapping hand or arm is feeling really worn out. Um, definitely, I'd say to prioritize your health over practice for sure. And I think physical signs like those are the right indication that you're done for the day. Um, as with any training method, it's important to you know listen to your body when it's telling you to stop, and you should be good to go. And also, so when starting each session, um, you know even if this isn't your first session, like you've done a few sessions with this map set already. Um, I'd still recommend playing the Stacks 2 and Stacks 3 difficulties at the start of each session and just kind of warm up and practice your you know, tapping regimen and stuff like that before moving on to the other difficulties, um, sort of just to get into the groove of things. And another thing to keep in mind is improvement. When training a skill, most often actually comes between sessions, um, especially after you sleep, um, rather than during the session itself. So. I mean, obviously, you know, during one session, you'll come to, I guess, realizations, basically like what you might be doing wrong with your tapping and fixing stuff like that. And, you know, within one session, you might be getting better scores, but improvement really solidifies itself after you sleep, after, you know, after a good night's sleep um, between sessions. So just keep that in mind. And also uh, with that in mind, um, like using this map set regularly, like a little bit each session is really valuable. Because, you know, after each session, you know, you get your sleep and you come back feeling improved the next session. So if you come back to this map set regularly, I think it'll be really, really helpful. So hopefully this map set helps you. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Please comment or send me a message or anything like that and I'll get back to you. Um, you can find me on Discord through my Discord server and just ping me or send me a DM. Or you can even ask while I'm streaming. Um, I stream basically every day around the same time, so feel free to stop by. And if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to just ask in the chat. Just whatever works best and I'll make sure I get back to you. So yeah, hopefully this helps and thanks for watching.